Welcome back to Talk of the Town. I'm Ted Baxter, chatting pleasantly with Father Terrence Bryan of St. Dominic's Church. Now, Father, before we broke for the commercial, you said that your church was located in the Edina District, one of our wealthiest neighborhoods. And yet you told us the attendance is good. That's right. I mean, I don't get it. I mean, what do rich people need to pray for? <laughs> I mean, they've got everything, right, Father? Uh, I guess sometimes they have to pray for forgiveness for how they got everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just doesn't seem fair. I mean, some poor guy's praying for food and he can't get through because some rich guy's there ahead of him praying for a digital watch. <laughs> you know, uh, kind of with no hands. Press a button, little numbers light up, you want to know the time. Shockproof and waterproof is a uh, golden expansion van. God, I'd like to have one of those. You mean like this one? Oh, that's a, that's a gift from my parishioners. I must admit, Ted, sometimes I do think I'd be more useful working in a less affluent neighborhood. Well, why aren't you, Father? Well, you, uh, you remember what the Bible says, Ted. How hard it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. So, in a way, I am working for the underdog. <laughs> That's pretty good, Father. <laughs> if you weren't a priest, I'd say you had a sense of humor. <laughs> oh, then, Father, can you shed a little light on the Adina Community Exchange program you're involved in? Well, we've arranged for youngsters of different economic backgrounds to spend weekends at each other's houses. And, uh, well, we hope it'll break down some of the uh, suspicion and distrust they have towards each other. Well. Oh. Well then, Father, can you shed a little light on the Diana Community Exchange program you're involved in? <laughs> oh, whoops, I'm sorry, but we just ran out of time. <laughs> Thank you for being with us, Father Brian. Next week, we'll meet another fascinating person from our town, tree surgeon Virgil Davis. <laughs> I would have been a tree surgeon, but I can't stand the sight of sap. <laughs> Well, this is Ted Baxter saying goodbye and thank you for watching Talk of the Town. <laughs> okay, thank you, everybody. Hey, it was great working with you, Father. You're a terrific guy. And if you ever run for Cardinal, you got my vote. <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, you're welcome. I enjoyed it. Listen, that thing you're doing with the kids sounds really good. I was thinking it might make an interesting documentary. I'd love to talk to you about it. Oh, sure. Well, if you're not doing anything right now, why don't we have a cup of coffee? All right, good. Good. Oh, and I want to apologize for some of the questions Ted asks. Sometimes he gets a little carried away. Oh, that's all right, Mary. Uh, we're all God's creatures. It just goes to show you that even he can have an off day. <laughs> hey, what are you working on, Mayor? Oh, that show with Father Brian. Grant really likes the idea. He said if I can get the budget down and present it to the station manager. Steve Murray, how about some lunch? Oh, no, thanks, Ted. Uh, Ted, on the documentary, would you be willing to work for a little less than you normally do as a favor to me? Well, Mary, <laughs> I got a, a sick aunt who's got hospital bills. <laughs> I got a cousin who's out of work, and I got a mother who needs rent money. Right. If he doesn't give to them, why should he give to you? Oh, well, maybe Father Brian will have some ideas when he gets here. You two are having lunch again? Mm-hmm. Gee, Mary, that makes three times this week. Well, I can understand that. I used to have a crush on the flying nun. <laughs> Mary, are you finished your budget? Yeah, just about. I still have a few problems, but I'm going to have Taylor, lunch. Taylor, have you heard the latest? Mary's dating a priest. <laughs> Ted, that's not funny. Father Brian's a man of the cloth. Yeah, so is Tarzan. You know what a swinger he was. <laughs> a joke, a joke. <laughs> How are you, Father? Hey, Murray. Ted. Are you ready? Yeah, just a bit. Give me one minute. Hey, Father, great threads. <laughs> you know, I always thought your priest had to wear that collar. Oh, but that's silly. I mean, you don't wear it in the shower. <laughs> or you don't play tennis with it or at the beach. No, if we did, we'd get a funny tan, huh? <laughs> Hello there. Hi. I'm Sue Ann Nivens, Miss Sue Ann Nivens. Terrence Bryan. Well, 
Tell me, Terrence, are you new here? I hope. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Mary. We're going to lunch. Oh, lunch. Dark place, candles, wine. <laughs> I'll bet that's how you operate. As a matter of fact, it is. <laughs> have met. Oh, yes. Not bad, Mary. You must be doing something right, although I'm damned if I know what it is. <laughs> There's something I don't think you understand. This is Father Brian. He's the priest at St. Dominic's. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the queen of Romania. <laughs> almost 20 years old before I made up my mind to go into the church. For a long time, I was trying to decide whether I wanted to be a priest or a baseball player. As a matter of fact, I played two seasons of uh, semi-pro ball. Oh! You know, and then, uh, one night I heard a voice telling me to give up baseball. It was the manager of the team. <laughs> well, are you ready to order, Father? Uh, well, what are we drinking today? Oh, I think I'll just have a Virgin Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Tomato juice. <laughs> One virgin tomato juice. And for you, sir? I'll have a martini. <laughs> Mary, Liv, you don't mind my being dressed like this, do you? Well, no. Not if you don't mind my being dressed like this. <laughs> Why would I mind? Well, it's just that when I'm wearing that collar, uh, there are a lot of things I can't do without attracting attention. Like what? Well, for instance, I, uh, I can't go to R-rated movies. Can't sit, at a, can't sit at the bar and have a drink. I can't even visit a sick friend without the whole family saying, this is it. Oh. <laughs> Believe me, a lot of things a priest can't do. Yeah. Well, I, I guess the church does No, have... no, it's not the church, Mary. It's the parishioners. They don't want me to have any fun. <laughs> and then they go out and have extra fun. First they have theirs, then they have mine. You know? <laughs> and then they come to confession and tell me what I missed. <laughs> that you can joke about it like that. I don't know, Mary. Church is changing awful fast. You know, I have a friend I was in seminary with, and the other day he told me he'd met a woman, fallen in love, and was leaving the priesthood. He asked me what I thought. I jumped on him pretty hard, but then I started thinking, what would I do if I were in his position? I mean, it's, it's not inconceivable that someday I might meet a woman, fall in love. I'm not sure I know how to handle all that. Oh, not Sarah. We were having a great chat, and I had to go and get serious. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. It's all right, really. Listen, it's not every day a girl gets a priest to confess to her. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, you know something? You're terrific. Oh, thank you, Father. No. Call me Terry. All right, I will. <laughs> Relax, Mayor. They're bound to approve the show. No, Murr, it's not the show I'm worried about. Well, what is it? I don't know, Murr. Call it woman's intuition or a gnawing feeling in my gut. I'd rather call it woman's intuition. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it, it sounds crazy, I know, but ever since Father Brian told me about his friend leaving the priesthood because he fell in love, I just had this nagging feeling that Father Brian's attracted to me. No, it's crazy. No, it isn't, Murr. I mean, I know I have certain... I mean, men have told me. <laughs> well, some men have told me that I'm... appealing. <laughs> nice to be with. Sexy. Who knows? <laughs> Oh, forget it, Mayor. A priest just doesn't leave the church for little things like that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mayor. Oh, it's all right. And you're right. I mean, the more I think about it, the more I realize he's a dedicated man. Mary, the show's approved. Go do it. Oh, Mr. Grant, that's wonderful. Thank you. Well, wait a minute. Don't you want to tell me anything? Give me any advice? Yeah. Don't screw it up. <laughs> Way to go, Mayor. Way to go. Oh, thanks, Murr. I can't wait to tell Father Brian. You don't know how excited he's going to be. Hello, Terry. Guess what? 
Yeah, just a minute ago. Isn't that wonderful? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Tonight. My place, sure. <laughs> What is it, Mayor? He wants to postpone the show. He's uh, thinking of leaving the priesthood. <laughs> Mary, would you stop pacing? You're driving me crazy. You're pacing inside, aren't you? <laughs> Okay, Mary, go on and pray. Oh, thanks. That's right. You know that picturesque lakefront cottage I bought for my retirement? My whole side of the lake is covered with slime. <laughs> and yesterday, I spilled spaghetti sauce on the most expensive sports shirt I own. The yellow one. The yellow one. And to top it off, my daughter thinks she's in love with a Christmas tree salesman. <laughs> I will bother you with my problems. It's something I should work out myself anyway. I just don't think you can handle it. Get in here. <laughs> What do you mean you don't think I can handle it? Well, Mr. Grant, I do appreciate your concern, but I just... I just don't think it's something you could understand. Mary, when have I ever not been understanding? Have you ever had anything bother you when you couldn't come to me? Huh? Your welfare is one of the most important things in the world to me. I'm on your side. So tell me, I'll understand. Well, Mr. Grant, I'm afraid that Father Brian is thinking of leaving the priesthood because he thinks he's in love with me. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> A priest? What's due to Mary? do anything. Oh, you must have done something. <laughs> I don't understand you at all. <laughs> Why a priest? You're an attractive woman. You can have any man you want. A doctor, a lawyer, a Christmas tree salesman. <laughs> Look, Mr. Grant, I spent some time with Father Brian, but I did nothing that would lead him to believe that we were anything but friends. I enjoyed his company. I tried to make him enjoy mine, but I did nothing. Repeat, nothing, nothing of which I am ashamed. I'm just sorry I brought the whole thing up. You haven't been any help whatsoever. No, 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 you just hold on. Just, just hold on. <laughs> you came in here a few moments ago like a confused, scared, timid little kid. And now, you're a confident, secure woman. <laughs> Completely in control of the situation. And you say I didn't help you? <laughs> yeah, well, thanks, Mr. Grant. <laughs> good night, Murr. Good night. Oh, and good luck tonight. Yeah, thanks. I'll need it. Hey, I'm so nervous, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, say, Mary. You uh, said to remind you that tomorrow you wanted someone to come pay my dressing room and get that new chair in. Yeah, right. Thanks, Ted. Ted, I did not say that. 
<laughs> Does Joe know what she's doing? <laughs> What's she so upset about? Well, Mary's seeing Father Brian. Ah, oh, Father Brian. Love is a strange and wondrous thing, you know, Mary? It brings together such totally different people. What are you talking about, Ted? Well, he's a priest, she's a producer. He's a man, she's a woman. He's a Catholic, she's a Christian. <laughs> Hello, Father. Father. Father, couldn't happen to a nicer priest. <laughs> Hey, uh, Mary just left. Oh, yeah, well, I just wanted to apologize to uh, Lou for backing out of the show. You know? uh, is he in there? Oh, yeah. Uh, look, Father, uh, I've got to run, but before I do, uh, you know, when I was first married, uh, I used to run right home after work. <laughs> and now, 20 years later, I still do. <laughs> the only difference is, uh, then I did it because Marie and I were in love. And uh, now I do it because if I'm late, she gives my dinner to the cat. <laughs> Think it over. <laughs> oh, Lou. Oh, hi, Father. Listen, I just wanted to tell you how sorry I am about, um, you know, dropping out of the documentary. Oh, no, no, no. That, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, why don't you sit down? No, I can't. I'm uh, meeting Mary, and then after that, I got an appointment with my bishop, so I'll, I'll see you later, huh? Yeah, uh, 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 Father, Father, uh, there's a little story I'd like to tell you. Uh, was it a long story, Lou? Oh, no, no, no. Believe me, I'll make it as brief as I can. Okay, if it's important. Yeah, it's very important. Right. Well, where are you going? Well, I, I gotta get a drink. <laughs> I can't tell you a story like this without a drink. Well, you're only gonna need one glass. Why, you drink with a bottle? <laughs> no, I, I don't want any. Uh, Lou, you said it wasn't gonna take too long. Uh, that's right. It's just a short, short little story. Now, you see, when I was a kid, about 12... 12 years old. Lou, huh? give me a hint. How old are you when the story ends? <laughs> You're making it longer. All right, all right, sorry. <laughs> when I was a kid about 12 years old, I used to pass by this bicycle store every day, and there was this bicycle in the window. It was beautiful. It was red and silver, had hand brakes. It, Lou, I believe you, the bike was beautiful. I wanted that bike more than anything in the world. But we couldn't afford it. However, my best friend Pete, his father got him that same bike on his birthday. That's an interesting story. <laughs> it's not over yet. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Two days after Pete gets the bike, he's riding along. Beer barrel falls off a truck. Peter hits it. Breaks both legs. <laughs> I wanted that bike real bad. But I was better off not getting it. <laughs> See my point? No, I don't. <laughs> Let me explain it. <laughs> Now, maybe you didn't understand because I might have left out some important parts. Lou, there couldn't have been anything left out of that story. <laughs> you got 12 years old, yeah. handbrakes, beer barrel, broken, broken legs. legs yeah. oh. What's the point? Here's the point. You shouldn't leave the priesthood for any woman. You get the point now? That point I get. That mm -hmm. point is clear. Mm -hmm. But that's not why I'm thinking of leaving. It's just that I, I can't continue as long as I'm hounded by doubts. And Lou, these doubts go right to the heart of why I became a priest. I'm caught in a deep and tormenting and agonizing moral crisis. That's wonderful! <laughs> Forgive me for rushing around like this while you're here. It's just that I'm expecting someone and I have to get ready. That's okay, Mary. I didn't come over to see you. <laughs> you didn't come over to see me? No, I came over to stick by you. Well, thanks, Georgia, but why do I need to be stuck by? Mary, Ted told me everything, and I'm 100% behind you. 
Last night, I admit, I had a moment of doubt. I kept saying to myself, Mary is a terrific person, and she must have a wonderful reason for attempting a man away from God. <laughs> but I couldn't think of it. Georgette, I am not tempting him away. Not by that. <laughs> I don't want him to leave the priesthood. I'm so relieved. I wouldn't want other women calling my best friend a church wrecker. <laughs> Mary, does he know you're not tempting him? Well, he will. I'm going to tell him tonight. Oh, gee, I never knew anyone who had to kiss off a priest before. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Father, come in. Father, I'd like you to meet my friend, Georgette Franklin. This is Father Brian. How do you do? Hello, Father. I'd like to talk to you sometime. I'm thinking of converting. Well, I'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you. I thought I'd give him something to stay in for. <laughs> Father, I want to say something to you. I know just what it is. So I'm going to just say it very clearly and straight out. Sure. Father, I'm <laughs> really uh, just you're so very flattered you know, that, that you like me. And, you know, I really like you, too. But see, I, I don't, um, my feelings for you, I mean, if you are thinking of leaving the priesthood for... Mary, I'm not thinking of leaving the priesthood for you. You're not? No. You mean there's someone else? <laughs> I'm not leaving for anyone except me. Oh. Well, you see, I thought when you told me about your friend who left the priesthood because he fell in love, well, I, I thought that it might be that, that you could have uh, fallen <laughs> into uh, love. <laughs> <laughs> Not that funny. <laughs> Mary, that's hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess. Yes, yes. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I... I thought, you know, what's <laughs> inconceivable, you know, it's, I mean, I'm not really all that unattractive. <laughs> Father, would you please stop laughing? Mary, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm just, just so funny. I, <laughs> I was so tied up in my troubles, you see. I, I didn't even notice you. Oh, well, no, that's I'm sorry. Okay. Really, I, I, someone will come along eventually. <laughs> Listen, it's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, a lot of people your age come to me uh, worried about meeting someone, you know. Yeah, really, that's, o that's okay. Well, don't... <laughs> Mary, we have some wonderful dancers over there at the church, no. you know. <laughs> yeah. We have an over-30s club. No, it's really... <laughs> okay. uh, I'm sorry. I'll stop trying to solve your problems and start working on mine, huh? Okay? Okay. Would you like some coffee? No, thanks. I better go. I'm going to go talk to the bishop about taking some time off to think things through. There's a kind of retreat the church has set up for that kind of thing. Well, you go there and you do some really good thinking. And then when you get back, I want to hear from you. Okay. Oh, by the way, I know you're really going to like working with this priest who's replacing me on the project. Really good looking guy, six foot two, blonde, blue eyes. Get out of here. And so these 30 Twin City youths go back to their own lives, knowing as they never did before how the other half lives. Good night from your reporter, Ted Back. Stay tuned for Gilligan's Island. A lady gorilla falls in love with Gilligan. Next on Channel 12. <laughs> So, Mr. Grant. All right, Lou. Get on the phone. Why? They cut us off. The show was over. My name wasn't over. Oh, okay, Ted. I worked over a month on this show. I would really like to hear what people had to say about it. Mr. Grant, what'd you think? Honest opinion. My honest opinion. Mm. Considering the budget and the other problems you had, you did a pretty good job, Mary. Pretty good script, too, Murray. Oh, thanks, Lou. Thanks. 
<laughs> and Ted? Yeah, Lou? <laughs> you were controlled and dignified. I think you were the best I have ever seen you. Just great. Boy, Lou, when you drink, you're really nasty. <laughs> crazy, I know, but ever since Father Brian told me about his friend leaving the priesthood because he fell in love, I just had this nagging feeling that Father Brian's attracted to me. No, it's crazy. <laughs> no, it isn't, Murr. I mean, I know I have certain... I mean, men have told me. <laughs> well, some men have told me that I'm appealing. Nice to be with. Sexy. Who knows? Oh, forget it, Mayor. A priest just doesn't leave the church for little things like that. Oh, I'm sorry, Mayor. Oh, it's all right. And you're right. I mean, the more I think about it, the more I realize he's a dedicated man. Mary, the show's approved. Go do it. Oh, Mr. Grant, that's wonderful. Thank you. Well, wait a minute. Don't you want to... Tell me anything? Give me any advice? Yeah. Don't screw it up. <laughs> Way to go, Mayor. Way to go. Oh, thanks, Murph. I can't wait to tell Father Brian. You don't know how excited he's going to be. Hello, Terry. Guess what? Yeah, just a minute ago. Isn't that wonderful? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Tonight. My place, sure. What is it, Mayor? He wants to postpone the show. He's uh, thinking of leaving the priesthood. <laughs> Pacing inside, aren't you? <laughs> okay, Mary, go on and pray. Oh, thanks. That's right. You know that picturesque lakefront cottage I bought for my retirement? My whole side of the lake is covered with slime. I'm just waiting for Mary. We're going to lunch. Oh, lunch. Dark place, candles, wine. <laughs> I'll bet that's how you operate. As a matter of fact, it is. <laughs> have met. No. Oh, yes. Not bad, Mary. You must be doing something right, although I'm damned if I know what it is. <laughs> There's something I don't think you understand. This is Father Brian. He's the priest at St. Dominic's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and I'm the queen of Romania. <laughs> No, I was almost 20 years old before I made up my mind to go into the church. For a long time, I was trying to decide whether I wanted to be a priest or a baseball player. As a matter of fact, I played two seasons of uh, semi-pro ball. Oh! You know, and then, uh, one night I heard a voice telling me to give up baseball. It was the manager of the team. <laughs> Bill, are you ready to order, Father? Uh, well, what are we drinking today? Oh, I think I'll just have a Virgin Mary. <laughs> uh, make that a, a tomato juice. <laughs> One virgin tomato juice. And for you, sir? I'll have a martini. <laughs> Mary, Liv, you don't mind my being dressed like this, do you? Well, no, not if you don't mind my being dressed like this. <laughs> Why would I mind? Well, it's just that when I'm wearing that collar, uh, there are a lot of things I can't do without attracting attention. Like what? Well, for instance, I, uh, I can't go to R-rated movies. Can't sit, at a, <laughs> can't sit at the bar and have a drink. I can't even visit a sick friend without the whole family saying, this is it. Um. <laughs> Believe me, a lot of things a priest can't do. Yeah. Well, I, I guess the church does No, have... no, it's not the church, Mary, it's the parishioners. They don't want me to have any fun. And then they go out and have extra fun. First they have theirs, then they have mine. And then they come to confession and tell me what I missed. It's really wonderful, though, that you can joke about it like this. I don't know, Mary. Church is changing awful fast. You know, I have a friend I was in seminary with, and the other day he told me he'd met a woman, fallen in love, and was leaving the priesthood. Asked me what I thought. I jumped on him pretty hard, but then I started thinking, what would I do if I were in his position? I mean, it's it's not inconceivable that someday I might meet a woman, fall in love. I'm not sure I know how to handle all that. Oh, not serious. We were having a great chat, and I had to go and get serious. I'm sorry. Oh no, no, it's all right. Really, he fell in love. Well, I I thought that it might be that that you could have uh, fallen. <laughs> into, uh, love. <laughs> Not that fun. <laughs> Man, that's hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess it is. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, I... I saw, you know, what <laughs> inconceivable, you know, it's, I mean, I'm not really all that unattractive. <laughs> Father, would you please stop laughing? Mary, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm just, just so funny. I, <laughs> I was so tied up in my troubles, you see, I, I didn't even notice you. I'm, oh, well, no, that's I'm sorry. Okay. Really, I'm, uh, someone will come along eventually. <laughs> Listen, it's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, a lot of people your age come to me uh, worried about meeting someone, you know. Yeah, really, that's, a, that's okay. Well, okay. <laughs> Mary, we have some wonderful dances over there at the church, no. you know. <laughs> yeah. We have an over-30s club. No, it's really... <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'll stop trying to solve your problems and start working on mine, huh? Okay? Okay. Would you like some coffee? No, thanks. I better go. I'm going to go talk to the bishop about taking some time off to think things through. There's a kind of retreat the church has set up for that kind of thing. Well, you go there and you do some really good thinking, and then when you get back, I want to hear from you. Okay. Oh, by the way, I know you're really going to like working with this priest who's replacing me on the project. Really good looking guy, six foot two, blonde, blue eyes. Get out. And so these 30 Twin City youths go back to their own lives, knowing as they never did before how the other half lives. Good night from your reporter, Ted Baxter. Stay tuned for Gilligan's Island. A lady gorilla falls in love with Gilligan. Next on Channel 12. <laughs> Grant. All right, Lou. Get on the phone. Why? They cut us off. The show was over. My name wasn't over. Uh, oh, Ted, I worked over a month on this show. I would really like to hear what people had to say about it. 
Mr. Grant, what'd you think? Honest opinion. My honest opinion. Mm. Considering the budget and the other problems you had, you did a pretty good job, Mary. Thanks. Pretty good script, too, Murray. Oh, thanks, Lou. Thanks. <laughs> you can have a drink. I can't even visit a sick friend without the whole family saying, this is it. Oh. <laughs> Believe me, a lot of things a priest can't do. Well, I, I guess the church does No, have... no, it's not the church, Mary. It's the parishioners. They don't want me to have any fun. <laughs> and then they go out and have extra fun. First they have yeah. theirs, then they have mine. You know? <laughs> and then they come to confession and tell me what I missed. It's really wonderful, though, that you can joke about it like that. I don't know, Mary. Church is changing awful fast. You know, I have a friend I was in seminary with, and the other day he told me he'd met a woman, fallen in love, and was leaving the priesthood. He asked me what I thought. I jumped on him pretty hard, but then I started thinking, what would I do if I were in his position? I mean, it's it's not inconceivable that someday I might meet a woman, fall in love. I'm not sure I know how to handle all that. Oh, not serious. We were having a great chat, and I had to go and get serious. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. It's all right, really. Listen, it's not every day a girl gets a priest to confess to her. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, you know something? You're terrific. Oh, thank you, Father. No, call me Terry. All right, I will. <laughs> hey, relax, Mayor. They're bound to approve the show. No, Murr, it's not the show I'm worried about. Well, what is it? I don't know, Murr. Call it woman's intuition or a gnawing feeling in my gut. I'd rather call it woman's intuition. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it, it sounds crazy, I know, but ever since Father Brian told me about his friend leaving the priesthood because he fell in love, I just had this nagging feeling that Father Brian's attracted to me. No, it's crazy. <laughs> no, it isn't, Murr. I mean, I know, I have certain... I mean, men have told me. <laughs> well, some men have told me that I'm appealing, <laughs> nice to be with, sexy, who knows? Oh, forget it, Mayor. A priest just doesn't leave the church for little things like that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mayor. Oh, it's all right. And you're right. I mean, the more I think about it, the more I realize he's a dedicated man. Mary, the show's approved. Go do it. Oh, Mr. Grant, that's wonderful. Thank you. Well, wait a minute. Don't you want to tell me anything? Give me any advice? Yeah. Don't screw it up. <laughs> Way to go, Mayor. Way to go. Oh, thanks, Murr. I can't wait to tell Father Brian. You don't know how excited he's going to be. Hello, Terry. Guess what? Yeah, just a minute. Maybe you didn't understand because I might have left out some important parts. Lou, there couldn't have been anything left out of that story. <laughs> you got 12 years old, yeah. handbrakes. Beer barrel, broken, broken legs. legs yeah. oh. What's the point? Here's the point. You shouldn't leave the priesthood for any woman. You get the point now? That point I get. That mm -hmm. point is clear. Mm -hmm. But that's not why I'm thinking of leaving. It's just that I... I can't continue as long as I'm hounded by doubts. And Lou, these doubts go right to the heart of why I became a priest. I'm caught in a deep and tormenting and agonizing moral crisis. That's wonderful! Well, Jeff, forgive me for rushing around like this while you're here. It's just that I'm expecting someone and I have to get ready. That's okay, Mary. I didn't come over to see you. <laughs> you didn't come over to see me? No, I came over to stick by you. Well, thanks, Georgia, but why do I need to be stuck by? Mary, Ted told me everything, and I'm 100% behind you. Last night, I admit, I had a moment of doubt. I kept saying to myself, Mary is a terrific person, and she must have a wonderful reason for tempting a man away from God. <laughs> but I couldn't think of it. Georgette, I am not tempting him away. Not by that. <laughs> I don't want him to leave the priesthood. I'm so relieved. I wouldn't want other women calling my 
Best friend, a church wrecker. <laughs> Mary, does he know you're not tempting him? Well, he will. I'm going to tell him tonight. Oh. Gee, I never knew anyone who had to kiss off a priest before. <laughs> Hello, Hi. Father, come in. Father, I'd like you to meet my friend, Georgette Franklin. This is Father Brian. How do you do? Hello, Father. I'd like to talk to you sometime. I'm thinking of converting. Well, I'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you. I thought I'd give him something to stay in for. <laughs> Father, I want to say something to you. I know just what it is. So I'm going to just say it very clearly and straight out. Sure. Father, I'm <laughs> really uh, just so very flattered you know, that, that you like me. And, you know, I really like you, too. But see, I, I don't, um, my feelings for you, I mean, if you are thinking of leaving the priesthood for... Mary, I'm not thinking of leaving the priesthood for you. You're not? No. Falls off a truck. Peter hits it. Breaks both legs. <laughs> I wanted that bike real bad. But I was better off not getting it. <laughs> See my point? No, I don't. <laughs> Let me explain it. <laughs> now, maybe you didn't understand because I might have left out some important parts. Lou, there couldn't have been anything left out of that story. <laughs> you got 12 years old, yeah. handbrakes, beer barrel, broken, broken legs. legs yeah. oh. What's the point? Here's the point. You shouldn't leave the priesthood for any woman. You get the point now? That point I get. That point is clear. But that's not why I'm thinking of leaving. It's just that I... I can't continue as long as I'm hounded by doubts. And Lou, these doubts go right to the heart of why I became a priest. I'm caught in a deep and tormenting and agonizing moral crisis. That's wonderful! <laughs> Forgive me for rushing around like this while you're here. It's just that I'm expecting someone and I have to get ready. That's okay, Mary. I didn't come over to see you. <laughs> you didn't come over to see me? No, I came over to stick by you. Well, thanks, Georgia, but why do I need to be stuck by? Mary, Ted told me everything, and I'm 100% behind you. Last night, I admit I had a moment of doubt. I kept saying to myself, Mary is a terrific person, and she must have a wonderful reason for tempting a man away from God. <laughs> but I couldn't think of it. Georgette, I am not tempting him away. Not by that. <laughs> I don't want him to leave the priesthood. I'm so relieved. I wouldn't want other women calling my best friend a church wrecker. <laughs> Mary, does he know you're not tempting him? Well, he will. I'm going to tell him tonight. Oh. Gee, I never knew anyone who had to kiss off a priest before. <laughs> Hello, Hi. Father, come in. Father, I'd like you to meet my friend, Georgette Franklin. This is Father Brian. How do you do? Hello, Father. I'd like to talk to you sometime. I'm thinking of converting. Well, I'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you. I thought I'd give him something to stay in for. <laughs> Father, I want to say something to you.